Ooh. Are you feeling brave, Graham? Oh. <laughs> try it, mate. I don't know. Uh, is it wingy? Yeah. Is it Can under? I, just... I think it might be a wing would be the, the easiest. Oh, this is nice, isn't it? <laughs> At the moment. <laughs> we just, uh, won't fly this while it's got in there. Which way is that? Yes, good question. No. <laughs> Isn't that the right way? No. No. Okay, mate. <laughs> this is going to be interesting. Well, yes. Interesting. Away from the cars. Is interesting is the is the word. Are we feeling brave then? Yep. When you're ready, mate. Launch mode. Throttle active. Way. Well, against all odds. <laughs> perfect launch, you get a perfect flight, you see. <laughs> it's a paper plane, isn't it? Really? It certainly is, that's what it's called, it's a dart. So yes, uh, taking that down okay. a lot. That make right, we were just oh, talking yeah. about you. We no. were talking about the new um, cremating place in town. <laughs> yes, right. thank you. Um, and if we pass away, can you design an aeroplane to put the ashes, say, in there? Bomb then, door. When you get so far up, you can open the door and let yes. all the ashes go over there. Oh, what a lovely idea. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure I could do that. However, as we're recording, it is of course illegal to drop anything from a model aircraft. <laughs> oh god. So where are we? Yes, sir. Well, she's a wah. Looking a little bit more stable, I think, he said, piling it into the ground. Feel better? Yeah, so it's much less twitchy. So it will roll and loop at least. Don't worry about the telemetry errors. I'm sure it's all spurious. Well, for something like you used to make at school, I think uh, it's going very well at the moment.
Well, I think even a beginner could fly this now that it's uh, set up pretty much. How slow can it go? It's pretty slow. It's not quite as noisy as I thought it was going to be. Battery's uh, getting lower now, so. 40.2 volts. I think it's time to uh, quit while we're ahead. And she's down in one piece. What wall could you want? Now, how do we build it? As kids, we've all made paper planes and had tremendous fun throwing them around. Some of us have probably even thought, well, I wonder if I could put a motor on this thing. Well, today that becomes a reality in kind with a little foam board model. And uh, this guy's made out of the five mil foam board, very similar to that that flight test use but it doesn't have any paper on it it's printed on one side normally i would make something like this out of depron but when i saw the price as you can see here buying depron cutting out the templates sticking them on cutting everything out and gluing it together i can save that time and uh, just pay 17 euros which seems like a good deal to me reading through the small print of course we find this little paragraph here. Because of logistics, companies restrict the package size, length, width, times height, to less than 90 centimeters. So we will cut the plane into small divided parts. You should use glue to stick well and install it by yourself after receive the package. Well, what are we going to receive? Let's take a look. When they said that it would be shipped in an envelope to uh, get past the uh, the space restrictions. They uh, certainly weren't joking. I guess they think that you uh, really like jigsaw puzzles. And as other people have commented, actually, you can see how jagged these edges are. It's not cut. It appears to have been snapped in into parts. Uh, which part goes on there? You can perhaps just see there that literally it appears to have been snapped in half. My next challenge then will be to see if all the pieces of the jigsaw puzzle are there. Here we are then. Um, a bonus, which I wasn't expecting, I have, thought I might have to make this, uh, is uh, the plywood motor mount that has been laser cut, so at least that's a bonus. And we have one other entire piece. These pieces, though, as I mentioned, have clearly been pretty much just broken in half. Some of them more tidily than others. Clearly one of the top surfaces, this being the other. And these are the undersides of the essentially paper dart design, if you will. This piece, you can clearly see what they've done because it's just about hanging together. It would appear that they put it over the edge of the table and just snap it in across. Uh, it may be more scientific than that, but somehow I doubt it. However, as we know, you get what you'll pay for. This piece here is possibly the worst with a, a chunk out of the end there that you might be, just be able to see. Can I bring that in a bit? Yeah, it's got a chunk out of the edge there, but we can patch that up as we've had lots of experience patching things up. As it says then, uh, we have to glue this well together before we 
glue it well together. I'll get on and do that. Well, Humpty Dumpty is back together again. Once you've done that, you are left with just four pieces. And you could see that there's no way that that would arrive on the slow boat from China in one piece. So perhaps doing it the way they do it works anyway. Seems strange to me that in their cutting frenzy, they didn't actually cut the elevons. But uh, that's going to be no problem. What to do next? I like to put some reinforcement on my models, so I'm going to use some clear packing tape on the top and see if we can jazz up the bottom there with some coloured tape as well. Then the first thing I'm going to do is to work out how the V shape is formed. It's not very clear, there's no instructions. We'll have to make it up as we go along. No change there, I hear you say. Let me do some thinking and some taping and we'll come back. Now there will have been some of you at the beginning that uh, dismissed my tenuous link to uh, the fact of paper model dart airplanes, in which case prepare to be amazed. Ta-da! Just sellotaping the different parts together we can see that it does indeed fold in a similar manner. The red triangle that's up in the corner there will set the angle and then we can put our rods through for the motor pod. I just thought I'd show you that. The assembly of the motor mount was very straightforward, just popping the parts out from the carrying sheet. There are a couple of little tags that keep it in place but they're very small and easily cut with a sharp knife. Super glue that together and we're good to go. Let's turn our attention now to the powertrain and other bits and pieces that we're going to need and I'm very keen on these bargain bundles as I call them from AliExpress in my case. This is what we get in the bundle. We have a couple of propellers which are the correct size. These are eight by six and the corresponding adapters for different motors. Speaking of the motor, this as you can see is a 2212 10 turn 1400 kV and that comes with the prop adapter, nice conical aluminium unit there. And I don't think we're going to need it but it also has the motor supports and indeed the screws. In addition to that then we have two El Cheapo servos, SG90, so they're 9 gram servos, complete of course with uh, various arms and as you can see that's going to be a nice push fit into the ready cut slot there in the wing. So we get two of those, we get a 40 amp ESC with the motor connectors on there and indeed an XT60 connector. That's all good to go and even a battery strap. All of that, as I checked today, is around about 16 euros, which I think is uh, a bargain, hence the bargain bundle. I'll go ahead now then and get the motor mounted up, put the servos into the wing and then work out where we go next. On to the next stage now. I've temporarily clamped at the front there the triangle that will set the angles here as sort of belt and braces. I've used a square here to make sure that the elevons are square and parallel to each other. I've already hinged those, just cut them off and chamfered them 45 degree angle. They've got plenty of movement there. There are in fact uh, little marks, little cuts in the foam to indicate where they go, but it's fairly obvious they're at the trailing edge of this centre section. And there's also a hole for the control horns that we're going to need to put in. I should be putting those on the top to avoid any damage in the uh, inevitable crash. Also at this point, it's time to install the carbon fibre tube. I've got these 4mm tubes at 1.5 metres long. 
I've already placed one through that you can see there so that I can measure that and then cut it to length and then do the other two as well. I'll crack on and do that then and then we'll catch up. Ready to go now. Let me talk you through what I've done. I made up a ply tray which I've laser cut. That's holding the battery in place there with the Velcro strap that came with the bundle and also another piece under there. If you can hear some strange music in the background, it's the local band practicing and uh, believe you me, they need some practice. To hold everything in place whilst I glued the parts I cut from this tube and I've no idea where I found it. Uh, that has an internal diameter of just under four mil. So they were quite a tight fit on there and kept everything in place while I glued it all together. We can see the uh, tip clearance there is not very much. It's probably going to make a lot of noise, this thing. My receiver of choice there, ELRS five channel jobby, only obviously need three channels. The antenna poking out there. My voltage sense for the main battery voltage. Using my favorite at the moment, the little pocket radio. Let me hook up the main battery. Without the rates on, we have a silly amount of movement there, so I can tone that down just with rates on the transmitter. And that is all good. I have my throttle cut. Note, as always, with the Delta, there's a little bit of up or reflex in the elevons. What I've also done is to program what I call a launch mode in. So if I press the launch mode button, launch mode. you can see a little bit more being added there to the up to make it easier to hand launch. As soon as I move the elevator, that extra amount, about 20%, gets taken out. And that's all good. I have my battery voltage connected. 16.3 volts. Being a 4S pack. That was chosen to get the C of G correct. There being no plans and no instructions to work out the C of G, I actually use a online calculator and I'll leave links down in the description to where you can find that. Depending whether you choose 20% or 25%, that depends really how comfortable you feel. 20% is probably to go for. And that gave me around 36 to 39 which works out about two to three centimeters in front of this spar here should be the balance point. So you should be able to see there that's pretty much level in that position. And of course we have our throttle cut throttle active. and throttle enabled. <laughs> Now that's got plenty of thrust obviously being 8x6 prop on there it's probably over propped i doubt if i'll ever get to full tilt on that but that remains to be seen hopefully tomorrow then cut. off to the flying field and we'll see how we get on thanks for watching